Hey everyone, this is Jane with Barlow Herbal and I've got Michelle from Barlow Herbal with me today. Uh, we are doing a redo of a video we did two weeks ago on taking care of your pets using herbal medicine and natural things and just different things that Michelle's done with her animals over the years, lots and lots of years. And the reason we're redoing this is because there was some information that we felt we just left out. We wanted to make sure that it was comprehensive and we just wanted to make sure that you had all of the right information. So um, at the beginning of this, I'm just gonna say, neither one of us are vets. I personally don't have any pets right now, but Michelle has lots of pets. The whole time I've known you, you are, you've always had pets. Yeah. And I love all of her pets and I love all the pets that belong to my boys and the, the co-workers that I have and the people that are in my life that have pets, I feel like I get the best of all the worlds, yeah, which, which I do, right? <laughs> so um, Michelle spent 15 years grooming, dog grooming, and um, you've been using herbs, and in particular our herbs, along with some other stuff on your animals for a long, long time. So yeah. um, we've got some notes here. We just want to make sure and cover some bases, but why don't you just go ahead and let everybody know what you've been doing with the things that we have and and oh, you know what last time we started with um, what are some things that you can do naturally with your diet so maybe let's start there first yeah so definitely I had some questions on what where to start feeding if they're gonna go raw or whatever there's options for everybody and I would say look at what's gonna work best for you if you want to cook the food you want to just feed it raw um, there's a certain way that you have to do that. So do your research and make sure you're, they're getting the right nutrients from whatever you decide. You can go pre-made. I mean, pet stores have tons of frozen options if it's just not something you wanna think about and you just wanna go buy, so. And you're talking about eating raw. That's raw, yeah. yeah. Um, and what are the benefits? There's so many raw? benefits. Dogs and cats get, 80 plus percent of their moisture from their food and feeding raw pretty much covers most of that and wet food too wet food covers a lot of that too kibble dehydrated food you need to add extra moisture in so not only that when you're feeding raw you're not breaking down all the nutrients that they do in kibble and even if you're cooking the food you're cooking out some of the nutrients no matter what it's going to be better than if you were to just feed a kibble because they go through a lot of different processes and they're not picky on where they're getting their meat per se so it could be an animal that died of a disease so the FDA does not control any of that so or, it's up to you so it's up to you and there are kibbles that you can get that are very picky on where they get their proteins but at the same time they're still processing it no matter what. So that's just something to keep in mind that the nutrients they're getting out of a raw diet is insane compared to a kibble or any process, even wet food is gonna be processed down. You will notice a huge difference in not only how, you I don't can know say how to it. say it. Just say it. <laughs> when the animal poops, it becomes <laughs> much smaller, much smaller and less smelly. And it, that just tells you right there that they're absorbing a lot of the food. Where when they're on a kibble, it's, it's different. And I don't even, I can even tell when a dog would come in with grooming if they were on a cheaper kibble than if they were on a high quality kibble, if they went to the bathroom while they were in my shop. So it, it really shows, that alone shows. Well, and I think the interesting thing is if you really think about it, is when you feed, uh a dog say a raw diet their digestive system is able to work the way it's supposed to work they're not trying to digest processed food yeah even if it has you know, a high quality kibble which gives them the nutrients they need and keeps them alive um, it doesn't actually that's not how their system was designed no nope. so if you are intimidated this is the thing that I think even you were when you first started feeding your dogs raw you were like this seems intimidating but yeah, I learned definitely really quick that their digestive systems, I mean, they start digesting food. If you feed them a raw diet, they're digesting as soon as it hits their mouth. Their saliva is different, so that's why a lot of raw fed dogs have really clean teeth. Even if you're grinding down the bone, which I don't suggest, I would say give bone whole. And there's specific bones that you want to feed and don't want to feed, but 
So research. So research that yeah. for sure. But even if you're grinding down the bone, their digestive juices in their mouth just instantly start breaking down the food. That wouldn't happen for us. We'd probably get salmonella. So <laughs> that's why they don't get salmonella poisoning. Yeah, so if you're looking at treating your dog naturally and your, even your cat or your pets all together, this is the best place to start is really pay attention to the nutrition that you give them. And I know that last time we did this, we talked about um, being really careful and selective. If you're gonna, if you give your dog or, and cat table scraps, um, this is where it's really important to be super strategic. You know, don't throw your sure. dog um, a piece of chocolate cake I mean, no chocolate at no, all. Because <laughs> yeah, chocolate is dangerous for dogs. It can be fatal. Right. So, and I'm sure most people, hopefully most people that have pets that care about their pets on this level, know that there's things like that that are really dangerous for their animals. So, the best place to start is with your nutrition. And is there anything else you can think about as far as nutrition-wise or? Yeah, um, I'm glad you brought up cats because cats are true true carnivores so they only eat meat they only need meat and getting getting water from their food is so important there's so many cats that get kidney go into kidney failure my cat was one of them because he refused to eat they're very picky too they he refused to eat even canned food he would rather starve so i know there's situations like that you know i've lived it and i wish i could change it but cats you cannot push past a certain point they need to eat every day dogs i mean they could probably go a couple of days and get hungry enough to eat the food that you want to give them and they're usually not as stubborn as a cat so cats you need to be very particular with um but giving them wet food or raw food is ideal for sure um to help with their kidney and bladder and all that all the systems and running water is actually really important for cats too. I recommend it for dogs, just filtered running water because it keeps it all the bacteria out and it keeps it constantly just flowing. But cats find water sources that are flowing. If they were out in the wild, that's how they find their water. They will not drink a stagnant water in the wild because that means there's probably bacteria that's gonna kill them. So a good fountain is always something that I recommend for health too because it's actually really important especially for cats yeah that's good to know I didn't really realize that but that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah. okay all right so uh, well and let's maybe throw in there make sure that you especially with your dogs make sure that you exercise them every day which I think that's one of the biggest benefits to humans is that it kind of forces you to get out and move um, sometimes multiple times a day if you might have a, a young dog or a dog that you know like brian has a dog that's a like a cattle dog yeah and yeah, cattle dogs are very active they're very <laughs> active and it's almost like you know most of you know choose a breed that's going to fit your lifestyle too if you're not up for going out for a couple of walks a day with a young active dog that that's what they need that's what their breed is um be be really strategic when when choosing a dog like that you know my nephew just got a third dog he got a cattle dog and they got this dog like two months before they got a brand they had their first baby so it's That's a like fun time. yeah so it's like we're all like you're getting a third dog like right before you have your first baby and and they got a cattle dog puppy <laughs> anyway it's to say that their life is interesting right now uh because the baby is uh about a, six weeks old is to, is very is put in a very mildly <laughs> so i think um exercising your dog um is i mean i i've had dogs in the past and i know that's been one of the biggest gifts is that you are forced to get outside even on days when it's cold maybe you would not, not typically go out um, that's a big gift for us as well as the companionship and the love that they give us too so all right so let's uh is there any tips on exercise that you can think of for your yeah for your so dogs? if you can't get out like these winters are really hard for us here in utah some days it's just like i have to put a coat and booties on my dog just so that she's not get dogs i should say they're not getting the salt on their pads or it's just too cold it gets so cold sometimes 
mental mentally wearing them out is almost more exhausting than the physical so find some <laughs> different mental things that you can do if you can't get out if you don't have the time a 15 minute mental um i guess workout like what i never even heard like, of that even just having your dog like here come here to me is so hard for people come if you oh, so can training. set You're talking up about doing some kind of training it's kind of training yeah i integrate training just because it's an extra time that i can integrate it but sit at the bottom of the stairs and put somebody else up at the top and then have them run back and forth calling them to you and that's that's just mentally draining for them 15 minutes of that and they're done for the day which is good yeah if they're stuck I'm a healer, <laughs> so i know how you know much they need how much just exercise they need and when i couldn't take my dog out consistently because of work work just got so busy i hired somebody to hike her every day because it's just not fair to her you know i so, remember that and it, yeah and she would send you pictures of the dogs all up yeah. hiking you'd be like oh here's my baby up there hiking but it's so bonding for you if you can get out and train and just walk your dog that's huge bonding experience so it's good for them mentally too yeah and you know we could uh do a whole, maybe we'll do that this summer, a whole little video about safely hiking with your with your dogs especially. Yeah. I don't know too many people who hike with their cats. In fact, <laughs> I've never really seen people hike with their cats. I have actually. I'm sure it happens. I'm yeah. sure it happens. Um, okay, so let's maybe chat about some of the herbal things, especially the ones from our line that you've used for your dogs and cats and why. Okay, so I wanna first say that cats, because I had questions about maybe telling how I use it for my cats more and I After didn't. After our last video. Right. Yeah, we had a lot of people, this is one of the reasons we wanted to redo this because we wanted to make sure that we gave correct information and more detailed. Right. Yeah. I know that cats process things differently. Their livers just work different than even a dog or us. So I didn't mention cats a lot because they can be so sensitive. I have personally used all of these products on my cat cats, I should say, because my older cat had cancer before he passed, and I have not ever had an issue. With cats, I would always say one drop. One drop's the dose, and that's good. Yeah, and, I mean, it, they're going to respond pretty quickly to that, because ours are not diluted. They're very, very concentrated, so if you're if you decide to use it, just keep in mind that one drop is going to be good a couple of times a day. So, That's um, great. yeah, and dogs respond a lot quicker than we do too. So keeping the dose low, if you want to just start at a drop, see how they do. And then in a couple of days, increase it to two drops and then up from there, the dosage that we are giving you on the PDF is probably the max dose that you will ever need to do more than likely you won't even need to hit that dose, which is good for you. It's gonna save, you know. Yeah, you... it'll last a long time. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and the thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure and get our reduced alcohol version of the three formulas that we suggest are good for your animals. The LDM 100, you'll recognize it by a blue label. The Essiac, uh, which is an anti-cancer formula, it's got a green label. And then the Clarkia, which is anti-parasite, has a pink label. And they will say on their reduced alcohol because animals, their systems cannot handle even small amounts of alcohol. So that's really, really important for you to know. Yep. Yeah. So I use the LDM on both of my dogs. I actually do a daily dose. Um, I only feed my dogs once a day because they are on raw. Um, they get one dose with their meals of all three products. Um, Clarkia, I keep, I had questions on this too. I keep the dosage because I do it daily very low because they don't need that much. They're not, they're not being treated for parasites, if that makes sense. They yeah. don't have them. I'm doing it as a preventative, so they don't need a full dose. I do maybe like four drops a day for, I have an 80 pound lab and a 40 pound healer mix, so that kind of gives you an idea. Even the healer, sometimes she'll get less. It just depends. We're not super particular because we're not doing the max dose on either of them. So um, LDM, I give them every day because my one dog has yeast issues and she always has since she was a puppy. When we got her, 
she was covered in ticks. And before I got her from the rescue, they had given her three doses of uh, flea and tick drops that you put on the back, which a puppy should never get in the first place, let alone three doses. So I think that that's been kind of an issue for her just because she was heavily dosed with pesticides, essentially, right away. So um, I keep the dosage on her because I do it daily and it's really helped. She was getting chronic ear infections, her pads always stunk. Um, I did the daily dose of twice a day. I did eight to ten drops twice a day until the symptoms were pretty much gone. And then I would take the gold label LDM, which is the alcohol, and put it directly in her ears. Specifically one ear for some reason. Every once in a while the other one. but um, And to help treat the ear infection that she was chronically having. For two years the vet tried to get rid of it and nothing worked. And then when we got the reduced alcohol, I was like, well, I'm going to hit it with this too, because it seemed systemic to me. And she just wasn't being treated that way. So we haven't really had an issue since. It's been a couple of years now that she's been consistently taking it. As soon as all the symptoms went away, I went down to just the four drops. We just do a small dose a day with her food too. Yeah. So that's a really good reason to have the, like you said, the gold label. That's the full tinctured alcohol LDM so that you can use it topically. So that is safe for your animals. So you can put it in their ear or if there's a skin wound, um, you can use it topically on their skin. It's internally where the alcohol is a problem. Right. But also you wouldn't want to put the reduced alcohol LDM in an ear because it's in an organic vegetable glycerin, which is, a, it's a natural sugar, but it's still a sugar. And it's not, it's going to actually make the problem worse. So you want to make sure and use the reduced alcohol internally and use the other topically, the full tincture. Yep. Yeah. So the LDM is a broad spectrum antimicrobial. So besides, so like what other types of infections besides ear infections? I used it for my cat for a UTI. Um, got rid of it actually really quickly within probably a week max. Um, and my other dog, she has chronic UTIs because she had a form of cancer that kind of causes those just consistently. It's just, I feel like it's a system, systemic thing as well. So I give her a consistent dose, a small dose every day. She hasn't had a UTI. As soon as we figured out what was causing it, she hasn't had one since. And I've had her three years this spring and she's been good. That's so awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so think about the different infections that your animals get. And again, I love the, the information about dosing super low because cats and dogs are much more sensitive than humans. Uh, we can pretty much throw the kitchen sink at, at ourselves and, and we still survive. I know. And, and most of just a lot of times we thrive too. <laughs> so we need to put maybe put ourselves in the mindset as, okay, all this stuff is we're sensitive to. Um, but okay, so that's the LVM and then the, the uh, Clarkia antiparasite. Yeah, the Clarkia, so if your pets are going out quite a bit, um, like mine, we, they all go hiking and we're out a lot. I do a daily dose. Somebody asked me if that was too much and I don't use any kind of dewormers. I don't do anything else. I don't feel like it's too much, but if you're not comfortable with that, definitely feel free to do like two days a week or three days a week or whatever you're comfortable with if you don't want to use any kind of dewormer because I think this, these are so potent that just getting it in their system weekly is still going to make a huge difference. If you decide, or I'm sorry, if you have a pet that's not getting out a lot, just a once a year dosage of like six weeks, like you would a dewormer, instead of just doing one big dose, it's going to be a lot stronger. You're just going to do a six week dosage and then call it good. And if they're diagnosed, you definitely want to do that until the parasites are gone. So you'd probably need to work with your vet to have them tested after the six weeks. Or if you still see them after six weeks, continue until you don't really see parasites anymore. And then have them tested by your vet if you if you feel you need to, just to make sure they're gone. So I'd be surprised if, it, if they weren't gone in six weeks, though, because usually it's like a two weeks with black walnut holes. I mean, they're just so potent, so. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's so nice to know you're giving your pet something that's natural, that's not gonna 
hurt their system. It's only going to help heal them. It's, you know, we, our pets are like our kids. We want them around for a long time and healthy and all of that. Okay, yeah. so the Essiac 20. Essiac, um, I use that daily for, or not daily, sorry, twice a week for my pets because one's 10, she's my bigger girl, and then the other dog already has had cancer, so I want to make sure that everything is kind of maintained in their system. It's not something that I would do daily um, just because some of the herbs in there are so strong that I wouldn't keep it in their system consistently. But doing like once or twice a week, I feel comfortable with that personally. So that's what I do. My cat, I don't give him SIAC, but I would use it for sure if he was diagnosed. He's never, he's just healthy as can be though. <laughs> and how, how old is this cat? He's 14. Okay. He just turned 14. Yeah. So. And you just had a cat pass away recently that was how old? He was, he was 19. 19. He was so, almost 20. So... You've got a longevity pet expert here. <laughs> Besides, I think one of the biggest things, and to me this is way, way obvious, is when there is so much love coming at your pets, they know it and it improves their longevity. Definitely. So, to yeah. me that's like, and I, I know people who, if you're a pet person and you're, we're 21 minutes in and you're still watching this, um, you know how you feel about your pets. I mean, they are, they enrich our lives so amazingly. So. Um, okay, and then the, the last thing that we have, we have an ultimate pet bundle that has those three in it. And then we also have our pet healing salve, salve used topically. In this bundle, we, we bundle them together, we put a discount on it. But the salve is called Lucy's Salve. It's named after Michelle's sister Glenna's dog, Lucy, and uh, who's no longer with us. But it's this beautiful salve. And if you get a, a, a tin of it, you'll see Lucy, her pictures on the front of it. So this, this is a... A really cool formula but it's also got a really special story behind it and a lot of meaning behind it too um, so that's have you do you use that a lot on your pets or what's I your do. experience with yeah that? um any kind of cuts I mean especially with my dogs out hiking a lot I always have a little bit of Lucy sap with me the lavender can help prevent licking because they don't like the smell of lavender it hasn't worked for my dogs personally because they'll eat anything. So just keep in mind that it might you might need to cover it or, um, I mean, there's other sprays that you can get to put on to keep them from licking. But I'd say most pets are not going to lick that. Yeah, and it won't hurt them if they do. And it won't hurt them, yeah. But it'll actually help heal it if they don't lick it off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. And so maybe let's kind of wrap this up with a, a couple of things. And again, this is... Um, if you're still here watching this after this after this much time, um, one of the things that we really wanted to just be really clear and careful about is the idea of vaccinations for your pets. And we just want to make sure that y this is something that you, you know, find a holistic vet, find someone that aligns with your beliefs and do your own due diligence. Due diligence. There's so much information out there, um, but there are in the beginning, in fact, um, I last year one of my sisters they her and her husband always have two dogs and one of their older dogs passed away and so they got a new puppy and bef before it got released from the breeder um, the puppy died of carbo oh yeah and they of course they went and visited her every week until they could bring her home and they were already completely attached and I know sometimes that happens so there are there are reasons, you know, there, there, there can, to me, it's not about, it's not about throwing the baby out with the bathwater when it comes to things like vaccinations. I think you need to follow your gut, do your research and get with a holistic vet who can really, really guide you. And the thing is, there's a lot of really good information online that you can do your own research on. So maybe, right. maybe you can expand on that. Yeah. I, I always vaccinate the first set. I always vaccinate, but I spread it out a little bit more than my vet wants to. I don't do the doses as close, which means I have to isolate my, if I get a puppy or kitten, it has to be isolated a little bit longer than I would like, but I'm okay with that because in the long run, I think it's the best for them. 
And if I can push, if my county allows it, I will push the rabies out as far as I can. But I do always give the first set. When I said I titer test, that means I have to vaccinate because you have to, in order to titer, they already have to have that in their system. Maybe explain so, what a titer test is. Titer tests are just testing how much of the actual, usually it's done with rabies because rabies is what's usually what the county is making you get or the state in general. Um, how much is left in their system. And I'd say 99% of the time, I have not had to revaccinate with the rabies vaccine because the it's coming in high enough that they're already showing that they don't need any more in their system to fight off the rabies. So. Okay, so that's, and I didn't really, I'd never heard of it until you mentioned it in the last video. Yeah. I was like, okay, well maybe I should, probably should ask you, what's a timer test? <laughs> so you might not need to give your pet, they might, and you can show proof, here's the test, I don't need it this time. If, if there's, you know, if it is in your county where you have to have that, um, then then do a titer test and see. Yeah. It's probably not a very expensive test to do either, is it? It depends. If you get um, it's it a at couple the vet? hundred dollars, yep, at the oh. vet. So it's, well. it's definitely more expensive and you have to do it every six months. Mm. I'm okay with that personally, well, but I don't yeah. have, that's why I'm always saying it depends on your situation and what you can do. Cause I think that goes for people too. I agree with you. Yeah. But no, I agree with you. And I think everyone, yeah, every, every situation is different. Every person is different. Yeah you might not be able to afford to do a titer test. So yeah. tune in, get, use your best intuition. And then there's this layer, and this is where I think it's a good place to end this. This layer of, if your dog does need to get a rabies shot that maybe you don't want to give them, uh, or, or whatever, what, I, whatever, give them love. Use healing energy. In fact, one of the things that Michelle does is she does Reiki, and that is energy healing. And you can do Reiki on anything yeah. or any it i mean here's a layer and i love this part so much so michelle has just started doing reiki on all of our packages before they head out the door on their way to you so this is giving not just the love and healing energy that we put into all the products for yourself your kids your family your pets but now there's an extra layer literally of love and healing energy as it's being shipped out the door to you so Surround your pets with, you know, learn some of these techniques on, you could just push love out. You could just, yeah. you don't, you don't have to go get trained on how to do that. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I love that we've, that we've been going for 27 minutes <laughs> because partly I really think that we covered a lot more information yeah. um, uh, and a lot with a lot better information um, and more comprehensive than last time. So I had to drag Michelle over here. But actually, it, I didn't have to drag her this time. It was, quite, it was quite, quite fabulous. So thank you, Michelle, for redoing this with My me. My pleasure. Yeah, and if you guys have questions, um, we've been forwarding your questions to Michelle. Um, it's just Michelle at BarlowHerbal.com. You can definitely reach out to her there. And what might be nice is if you wanna leave a, a, a question below this video, and then Michelle will go in and answer it. What's nice about that is that other people might have the same question and then they can, you know, they can just see what someone else asks and then and they can get their question answered right there. And that's a nice exchange and sharing of information. I know sometimes I'll watch a video and I'm interested to see what other people are saying. Yeah, me too. So I'll scroll down, I'll look at the comments and I'll see, um, oh, you know, sometimes it'll, it'll just answer a question that I might've had. Yeah. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, please do. Um, hit, the, hit the thumbs up button if you like this. It always helps the algorithm and it gets out there more so that other people will see this as well. And as always, share this if you find this valuable. Share this with someone else that you think could benefit. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we love you guys. And uh, we might pop on again for hiking season. Yeah. Yeah. We'll share some tips on how to safely hike with your dog. <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks again. Bye. Bye.